This is the Battle of White Plains from GMT Games. It's in the uh, Battles of the American Revolution series. Just completed turn two. And we'll have a quick summary of what went on and we'll look at some of the uh, the rules that for, for shooting in close combat. What's happening down south of the line well, I say down south, that is actually because of the, the max on its side, that is actually to the uh, west, so it's the uh, American right flank. British units are closed with the Americans and attempting to push this uh, advance force out of its defensive positions. The, uh, the attacks have been not been particularly successful they played a, a card which allowed them to advance and take one hex uh, another attack went in there and that actually resulted in a loss of an american step uh, it was not a very uh, epic step to say the least but it lost uh, the americans a bit of morale the, the attack here went in uh, and it went in badly and the americans inflicted a disruption on one of our units which uh, knocked our morale down again the British morale down we had uh, another attack up here which really didn't get going the American snipers uh, from the rifle units managed to inflict a disruption on the British so that sort of broke up the attack so there was only one real attack here and that failed as well okay we look at another few things here where, where you see white blocks that indicates there is a rifle unit in the hex to the uh, right of the block now rifle units that haven't actually fired yet get a plus one drm when they do the first fire you can see these because there's a counter under it uh, knocked off to, to one side and it's aligned but as soon as you fired that first shot during the day you lose that DRM so there's no way of telling where rifle units are unless you know if you can remember them all so what I do is I'm just putting these little white blocks to remind me where my rifle units actually are the red blocks is because units in the American outer screen when they're defending for the first time as so long as they stay within their initial hex get a uh, minus one drm bonus to their defense so uh, that means well it means that it's basically because they've been in prepared positions which they know what they're doing and where everything is sort of thing now i'm marking the ones that have lost that drm modifier as a with a red block well, the modified it applies by units not by hexes so you could have a combination of some that have had drms used and some that haven't the uh no is there anything else we really want to discuss no not really in terms of what's on the board let's have a look at um the various types of combat now the first thing you, you, that you do after a movement um, phase is you actually do defensive artillery fire. Now this game's a bit odd in the fact that artillery can only fire on the defence, so it's firing in your opponent against your opponent's uh, attack. So, uh, for example, the British are attacking here, so American artillery can use defensive fire, but British artillery can't do anything. They could only fire in the American term. So what you do with uh, artillery fire, you basically cross-reference the number of strength points that are firing with the range, okay? And you've got to basically throw equal or greater than this number okay so obviously the closer you are the more effective your artillery is now, artillery you can uh, fire just with one unit or you can combine fire from several units adjacent to each other to a target 
once you've actually scored it, th this role here is to get a hit. Once you've scored a hit, well, well, before we go into that, there are a load of DRMs that can affect you to hit roll. Okay, now if you get a hit, you then roll another die and look up on the damage table. In this case, it's the artillery damage table. You roll this die and cross reference it, and these are your results down here. Uh, the results are, you can see there, uh, R for retreat, that's retreat one hex, uh, D for disruption, where you retreat three hexes and you get disrupted. Uh, if you see a number, that's a step loss. If you see an asterisk next to a number, there could be a leader loss as a result. Okay, so the Americans did have a couple of guns, or did they? No, I don't think they did. I only got have any guns up in the front line so they didn't get defensive fire phase next thing that happens is your rifle fire phase which is simultaneous uh, so obviously if a rifle shoots another rifle unit and kills that unit that dead unit can still fire back because it's simultaneous now when you fire your rifles you have a plus one drm to hit for the first time you fire. Now, what happens with rifles is it's the same, we're pretty much the same as the artillery, so you can only fire adjacent with rifles. Um, we've got the DRMs applicable again. This time you look on the rifle fire damage table if you get a hit and then cross reference it. Okay. There are other types of guns, there are howitzers, which uh, we haven't gone into at the moment, we'll look at that later, and there's these amusets, which are a type of special sort of musket, but they're, they can only be fired <laughs> at artillery, oddly enough, and they have a, a two hex range, they also get a, a first fire DRM as well. Next thing that happened in this turn, we had a bit of close combat. In terms of close combat, what you've got to do is you've got to attack every hex where you're adjacent to an enemy unit. Okay. Now there is a slight exception to that, which we'll cover in a second. What you do need to do is you need to announce all your attacks simultaneously. You can you can do one attack, one hex could attack two. Uh, adjacent hexes or multiple adjacent hexes can can attack um, one single hex but what you can't do is you can't have two hexes attacking two hexes for example that doesn't work that that is not very clear in the rule book read it make sure you read the whole section on multi-hex combat before you come to a conclusion because when you read it first time, it looks like you can't do multi-hex combat um, for attackers. Okay. You need to uh, announce your attacks in order before you make any attacks. Now, you can get around having to attack an, an enemy unit if you create what's called a diversion. Now, a diversion means that unit doesn't have to attack a particular defender it, it just counts as screening it off but it must attack another adjacent unit and when it does that there's a minus one just let me check i think it's a minus one column shift before we uh, Diversion here, it's actually a diversion. Yeah, there's a column shift on your odds uh, against you as a result of one unit using a diversion, but that means you don't necessarily have to physically attack uh, a particular unit which is adjacent to your units. Next thing you do is you tot up all your uh, strength points and you work out your odds. Sometimes those odds, as I've said, can be uh, shifted by uh, 
by this diversion stuff and they can also be shifted here because the Americans have got a uh, one column favorable shift when attacked in their screening force hexes. You then go and look up all your close combat things and it goes through all your attacker benefits and all your defender benefits and you eventually come out with a, a, a number where which is, or it could be plus one to the attackers, minus one to the attackers, or whatever. Okay, next thing you do is use your tactics. Now we're using the solo tactic system. So you cross-reference these columns to see what the defending unit picks. Now make sure you pick your attacking option first. You can't wait for the defender to roll on this table and then say, all right, look they're running away so i'll do a full frontal attack you know you they've got to go first okay and then you, you sorry you the attack has got to do, make their decision first okay once you've got the the attacker and the defender options you look up on this tactics matrix and this gives you another modifier to the dice so say you add a, a plus one modifier to the attacker and uh, the <laughs> The attacker did a withdraw and the defender did a frontal assault, it would end up with a minus two modifier, so plus one would be reduced to minus one. Okay, you then go off to your close combat chart, looking at your odds column, and then you throw a dice, apply your final modifier, and this gives you a result. And Thing to remember with this game it's very heavily morale driven so it, you have to check what happens as a result of combats and the effects of the army morale because as your army morale disintegrates your army gets less and less effective okay so we quickly mention some of the results we've got the retreat one hex uh, disruption retreat three hex becomes disrupted one step loss, two step loss. As I've said before, if you do a step loss, you flip the counter over. If the counter's got nothing on the reverse side, it's a one step unit, so it's eliminated. Okay, no units have more than two steps, so any time you get a two step loss, your unit will be destroyed. And when I say unit, I'm talking about, oh, I've forgotten to do this. When you make an attack, you've got, each side has got to designate a lead unit. So that lead unit affects your DRM. So say this American unit attacked here. Uh, this one here. So you, attack, you get plus one because you're your lead unit. And the defenders uh, would also pick one unit within their hex. So they, that would be a, a zero for that one. So the... Uh, British side would get a plus one advantage to their DRM in the attack. So when you apply your results, you apply your results to the lead unit. Okay. Now, if some if you get a, res, a retreat result, for example, and the lead unit uh, goes out of the initial attacking hex, any other units in that hex must take a morale check. All right. And if they fail the morale check, they must retreat as well. Otherwise, they can stand firm or will stand firm. Now, a morale check is basically you've got each unit, you've got to throw a dice and you've got to get five, five or greater. Okay. Now, your morale is affected by things like your army morale, your individual unit morale, your commander's morale. So you've got all these morale check DR. M modifiers here and this will determine whether you retreat or not. It's also used for rallying which we'll get into later in this explanation of the uh, game mechanics. Uh, uh, we've got a uh, DC uh, unit is captured, uh, AC unit is a cap captured, attacker's choice, you get pinned Pinned units are restricted. We'll, we'll, do, we'll talk about pins when they happen. You get an asterisk, you get a leader eliminated. All right, here on the uh, actual combat result charts, 
over on your here, your model file charts. You see these red squares and red triangles. These indicate people get momentum chips as a result of the combat. Now, a momentum chip can be used to uh, affect your initiative role. It can also be, I think it can be used to bolster your army role, but we might have to look at that a bit closer. Um, it can be used to, to draw cards as well. To be quite honest, we'll leave uh, momentum chips until they come up because uh, I need to read the rules a bit more closely before I can talk about that. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the second turn and what happened. That's a bit of a long video, but we're introducing game mechanics here.